glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all. It's a joy to be with you on this first Sunday in the season of Christmas. Did you know that Christmas is a whole season in the Christian calendar and not just one day? It's two weeks long. It began yesterday and it continues until the celebration of Epiphany which is the commemoration of the visit of the Magi on January the 6th. Welcome to Rosedale United Church Online. My name is Kristen. I'm one of the ministers here. It's always good to be together. Rosedale United is a hub supporting human flourishing here in our neighborhood and around this city. We are an open and affirming congregation to the LGBTQ plus community And our building stands on the traditional territories of the Mississaugas, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We hope this time together will refresh your spirit and help you connect beyond to God's spirit and to your community. You are not alone. People of faith all around the world today are gathering as we are and we're glad that you're here. As we hear the music of our choir, we light our candles this morning. Glory to God. Quieting our minds now and opening our hearts to the divine in and among us, we gather ourselves in prayer. Let us pray. God of sultry, stable air, God of frosty wind and snow, we come to you this wintry day yearning to be swaddled against the raw chill of separation, loneliness, and lovelessness. Thaw within us whatever keeps us from echoing the angel's praise. Warm our moaning with the shine of your glory as you fill the empty stable in our hearts with your outpouring of home and love. Amen.
A reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established, established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth alike, young men and women alike, old and young alike. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. May we hear in these ancient words wisdom for our living today. Will you join me in the prayers for our community? Praise the Lord, all the earth. God's realm is here. Loving presence, holy one, into the pain of the agonized, breathe release into the hunger of the very poor, breathe fullness. Into the wounds of our planet, breathe well-being. Into the deaths of your creatures, breathe life. Into those who long for you, breathe yourself. Your kingdom come, your will be done. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Our second reading is from Luke chapter 2, and it's verses 41 to 52. We're, we're jumping ahead really rapidly from the birth of Jesus to this story about Jesus when he was, uh, when he was a young boy, the boy Jesus in the temple. Now every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the witness of the early church. Thanks be to God. All right, so our stained glass windows are going to help with our reflections this morning. So we're here in the back of the sanctuary and looking at a stained glass portrait of the story of the Good Samaritan. And I know you know this story very well. You know the broad strokes. Um, it's the story of a man who was beaten and robbed, left for dead on the side of the street, and everyone who should have known better walked right on past and didn't do anything to alleviate his suffering. A priest walked by in the story, and then a Levite, um, you know, a member of the holiest um, kind of family walked right by, but a Samaritan um, and Samaritans were ostracized um, and they were considered outsiders in Jesus' time. A Samaritan saw the man and stops and tends to his wounds and helps him get to a nearby inn where he pays the innkeeper um, to look after him and says, you know, whatever extra you end up spending caring for this man when I return, I'll pay you and then some. And it's a story that Jesus told about how we are meant to practice our faith with integrity. Um, Jesus defined the practice of faith with integrity as loving our neighbors as ourselves. And this, is, this story is how he defined that. I point this out because Boxing Day today is a day that leads us to think about how we practice our faith with integrity and what we're doing to help alleviate the suffering of others. The origins of Boxing Day have nothing to do with deals or going out on shopping sprees. Boxing Day originated in England um, out of concern for the poor. The custom on Boxing Day on December 26 was for struggling apprentices, um, people like Scrooge's clerk, Bob Cratchit, to go out into the streets with these boxes that had slits in them, um, and people would uh, um, deposit funds for them to, to help them out, to give them a little extra. Um, so that kind of morphed into a tradition of offering gifts to tradespeople on December the 26th, so that's where we get our Boxing Day from. And perhaps this is also because December 26th is the feast day of St. Stephen, who was martyred for his faith and for his integrity. Um, legend has it that Stephen 
worked in Herod's court, and when he converted to Christianity, he resigned. And Herod kind of chided him and said, you know, the, the likelihood of your faith um, being true is about the same likelihood as that cooked capon or rooster arising from my dish on the dinner table and crowing. At which point, the legend goes, the capon crew, Christus Natus Est. December 26th is a good day to ask ourselves how we are committed to living out our faith. How do we make it real and tangible in the world? One of my favorite examples of a person who lived his faith with integrity is captured in the carol, Good King Wenceslas, and the legend on which that carol is based. In the carol, the king, warm and comfortable in his castle, looks out his window at the frosty night on this very day, the Feast of St. Stephen, uh, Boxing Day, and he sees a poor man out gathering sticks, um, the only fuel that this man had to try and keep him warm. And so the king summons his page and, and asks him if he knows this man and where he lives, and the page tells the king, and the king's response is to say, you know, this, this, this is a person who shouldn't be alone. They shouldn't be eating alone. They shouldn't be suffering alone. So let's, he calls for flesh and wine and pine logs and the king and the page set out together through the rude wind's wild lament, it says in the song, to find this man and all three of them have a meal together. This carol ends, as I know you all know, with, with the line, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor, shall yourselves find blessing. How are our beliefs and our faith and our trust expressing themselves with integrity? We began this reflection with a reading from Psalm 148, a psalm of praise. Surely one of the most faithful ways we can praise God is by alleviating the suffering of others. Here we are with another one of our stained glasses in the sanctuary, and you'll recognize in this image uh, the story we heard in scripture, the story of Jesus in the temple. And I, I love this story of uh, Jesus as a child because it feels very authentic to me. I can see it happening, and I believe it because it's not a flattering story to Jesus' parent. No parents want this kind of story to be told about them, um, and that's what leads me to believe that it must be true. I have all kinds of similar embarrassing stories um, as a parent, mostly involving our youngest son. There was the time he ran away ahead of me when we were on our way home from the park. Um, he was very young, like I think he was three at the time, and I could not catch up to him. And when I got home, I couldn't find him anywhere and I thought he was locked out of the house. I didn't know where he'd gone. I ended up calling the police only to find he was already in the house. He'd let himself in because I'd forgotten to lock the door. <laughs> then there was the time he got his hand stuck in a treadmill um, when he was playing around with exercise equipment in a hotel gym. And the time I looked over at him when we were at a restaurant, he was very young at this time, uh, we hadn't even placed our order yet. And here he was chewing, chewing, chewing. And I'm going, what are you eating? And he said, I found all kinds of gum underneath the table. <laughs> No parent willingly makes up unflattering stories that paint their supervision in a poor light, which is why I'm prone to believe that this story about Jesus being left behind in Jerusalem while the rest of his family went on ahead is true. In those days, people traveled in big convoys, and as they traveled on foot, 
um, in big numbers, this was thought to be much safer than traveling on their own. So Mary and Joseph would have made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem with other family members from their village, and Jesus would have been one of many young cousins and friends in their, um, in their entourage, I guess you could say. It was completely reasonable for Mary and Joseph to assume that he was walking with an aunt or an uncle until they asked around and it was all, wait, you don't have him? I thought he was with you. And no, I thought he was with you. I'm sure they laughed about it later, but it must have been terrifying at the time. The story persists and persisted because it says something about Jesus' true nature. Why do Steve and I haul out the story of our youngest and the mouthful of gum or the time he ran ahead and we had to call the police? Because he's always marched to his own inner sense of authority. And while this has been hard for us at times as parents, we also marvel at what is revealed about our son through these stories. He's a scamp. He's an imp. And he makes his own way in the world with Huxpah. So when Jesus grew up and all their friends and family members chided Mary and Joseph, you're letting your son run off to do what? He's going around Galilee talking about the kingdom of God, proclaiming release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. What is he, crazy? Mary and Joseph could say no, and they could bring up this story. This is what is integrity to him. He's being true to themselves, they could say. Remember the time that they thought he was lost but it turns out that they found him in his father's house. He was always meant to be concerned about that which concerned his father. He was just being true to his calling, even then. Later, Jesus would preach in the synagogue in his hometown, and when he did, he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, Jesus read, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Jesus has always been about his father's work. He lived his true vocation even from a young age. Frederick, Beaker, Frederick Beekner wrote, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So on this Boxing Day, a closing question, how are you called now? How has who you are and what you are about always been a part of your deep and God-given nature.
And so we go out into this season comforted by the warmth of God's welcoming love, growing in our hearts, renewed by the strength of God's healing love, filling us and making us whole through the gift of the Christ child. Go in peace.